Since the Real Estate Services Act came into effect on January 1, 2022 and introduced the new requirement for written service agreements, registrants have raised questions about exclusivity. In this case, exclusivity means that a person receiving real estate services from a brokerage agrees to only receive those services from that brokerage for a defined period. The service agreement forms created by the MREA do not contain clauses that restrict a person from entering a service agreement with more than one brokerage at the same time, but it is something that can be negotiated. Brokerage representatives must explicitly explain that while service agreements are required before the brokerage can provide services, any additional terms, such as exclusivity, are not required by law and are negotiable. If this is not made clear, the brokerage and their representative may find themselves subject to a complaint or worse. If you are concerned that a prospective client may have an unexpired service agreement with another brokerage that could affect your working relationship with that client, it is best to ask before they sign a service agreement with your brokerage. Be careful to not induce anyone to breach a service agreement with another brokerage, which is prohibited by Section 33.1 of the Real Estate Services Act. Remember that Section 33.2 of the Real Estate Services Act may prevent your brokerage from collecting commission on a transaction if your potential client is already bound to an unexpired service agreement with another brokerage. If you intend that your client will only receive real estate services from your brokerage during the term of your service agreement, you may wish to negotiate an exclusivity clause to be inserted into the service agreement form. But as we have said, putting your service promises in writing is required by law. Imposing an exclusivity obligation on a client is not. On the MREA service agreement form, an exclusivity clause may be written in the space provided in Section 6. This is one example of an exclusivity clause. Essentially, by signing this, the client is agreeing that they will only receive real estate services from your brokerage until the agreement expires. Take extra care when explaining the agreement to your client so that they fully understand what they are agreeing to. The example clause would impose an obligation on the client to work only with your brokerage, and its primary purpose would be to prevent complications that may arise from overlapping service agreements. This is an additional clause you may wish to consider using. Use caution when adding clauses like these to your service agreements to be sure you are not creating obligations for your brokerage, yourself, or your client that are not intended. Consult with your broker or your brokerage's lawyer if you are unsure about appropriate wording for your specific situation. Communicate clearly and directly and be transparent with your prospective client about what their obligations will be based on the specific clauses you choose to include. Build confidence through the professionalism you display by clearly explaining every aspect of the agreement and answering their questions. When using an exclusivity clause like the example given, you may wish to provide an option for the client or the brokerage to terminate the agreement before it expires by giving written notice. This provision can be added as part of the exclusivity clause itself or when using the MREA service agreement form, this can be done by selecting option A in the termination clauses specified in section four. Including this option means that if the client's circumstances change or they are not receiving the services they expected, they can conclude their obligation as to exclusivity by notifying you in writing that they are terminating the agreement. If the client decides they want to work with another brokerage instead, they will have to provide this notice to end the agreement they have with you first. Likewise, if you or your brokerage determine that you are unable or unwilling to continue the level or extent of service the client is requiring, the brokerage can terminate the agreement by providing notice. For more suggestions on how to speak to your clients about service agreements, watch our previous episode, Service Agreements Part 1, Talking to Clients. 
Additional information and resources about service agreements are linked in the description below.